let's talk about uh, a little bit about graphing here. <clears throat> like I said, this course is a lot about, uh, about graphing. Uh, so let's, let's talk about graphing. Let's do a little bit uh, with graphing two equations, I mean, I'm sorry, an equation in two variables. That's what we're going to uh, out here. Equation in two variables. For example, <clears throat> let's start with, uh, well, let's just start with y equals 8 minus x cubed. <clears throat> so I want to be uh, graphing that. And you may know a little more about it than we're going to get into right now. We'll talk a little more about this one specifically uh, things that, that happen to this graph later. But for right now, we're just trying to graph it. Uh, <clears throat> and what we're going to do here is uh, using a table. Because as you know, hopefully know, graphing really amounts to graphing pairs of solutions, right? Because here, like one solution would be uh, to zero. All right, we're going to graph that point on the Cartesian coordinate system, the xy plane. <clears throat> okay, so we need to get these pair, pairs of solutions, or ordered pairs is what we call them. All right, um, now here's the ones I'd, I'd like for you, for you to use, um, starting off with, just so we get a pretty good idea. Sometimes these may not be the best ones to uh, Use, but let's just pick x, x, pick out x values. And in this case, I'm going to pick out uh, x to be negative three to positive three. Okay. Can I ask why you chose those numbers? Uh, they're just kind of middle numbers. Yeah. Like I said, those won't always be the best ones to use, but for now, okay. the ones that we grab, those will be fine. You. You may need others, but we'll just start with tables using that. Okay, well, <clears throat> then of course it's just uh, a matter of figuring out, well, I plug in negative three there. What have I got? It's eight, be eight minus uh, negative three cubed be negative 27, so that's gonna be a 35, this will be eight plus 27. All right, with me on that? Then a negative 2, so plug in the negative 2 there for x. That's all I'm doing is just plugging in. Plug in the x value. What does that come out? 8 minus a negative 8. 16. 8 plus 8. Negative 1. <clears throat> 8 minus a negative 1 cubed, so that'd be 8 minus a negative 1. 8 plus 1 would be 9. All right, then it gets a little easier with the positive ones, and zero. Eight minus zero, so that's gonna be eight. Uh, X is one, we'll have eight minus one, seven. And eight minus two cubed, be eight minus eight, that'd be zero. And last but not least, uh, three, eight minus three cubed, so that'd be eight minus 27. I believe that's negative 19. Anybody believe that? All right, <clears throat> so yeah, we put, put those on then our Cartesian coordinate system. And, you know, they may have, uh, I, I do have a worksheet on this one, so you may <clears throat> already have prescribed scale and can alter it if you need to. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going up to 35 and down to negative 19 on the y value. So on the xy plane there, 
Uh, we need to go with 35. And let's go by fives. Gives a pretty good idea there. It's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And then down negative 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 25. We'll scale these by 1. All right, yeah, so we've got the Cartesian coordinate system set up there. Okay, yeah, so these, these just gives, the, gives us points. This one's a negative 3x, positive 35y, so we go to negative 3 in the x, and then 35 in the y, so it's up there. A negative 2 and 16, so 15 is here, so 16. I'm going to say it's right about there. And negative 1, 9. Okay, right there. 0, 8. A little bit lower. 1, 7. That was pretty close there. And then 2, 0. And 3, negative 19. Okay, just plot those points. Question? Do I believe that? All right, well, yeah, we've just plotted uh, just a very few of these uh, points, but I think we can get a good idea here because, well, uh, can we kind of connect the dots here? So we at least got that. What do you think happens on the, uh, the outsides, if you will? Looks like it's going to keep going up there and down here, right? So, yeah, in this particular case, these, these points give me a pretty good idea of what the graph looks like. All the other points should fall in line with uh, what we've got shown here. Okay? Would it be wise to bring <coughs> graph paper in the future? Graph paper? Graph paper is great. Yeah, bring, if you would like to use, you don't have to, it's not a requirement, but graph paper would be fine. Like I said, I've got a worksheet for this. and. It does have uh, uh, a little uh, grid for you already, so but yeah, graph paper would be, be super. All right, so same thing, let's do uh, graph y equals absolute value of x plus 1. Same. Same table, negative 3, positive 3. Sometimes more, sometimes less are needed, but for now, that, that's what we we'll need. Okay. All right, what do we got? For negative 3, negative 3 plus 1, absolute value. Two. Positive 2, yeah. The absolute value of negative 2, which is positive 2. The absolute value changes it to positive. All right, then uh, negative 2 plus 1, that'd be 1. Uh, negative 1, what's going to happen there? 0? Zero. 0. And then 0, these get a little easier. 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'll do those right. Real quick. Just plug those in. X be 0, 1. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so not quite as spread out as that other one, so we'll just go by ones here. All right, we've got a negative three and a y is two. So negative three, y is two. Negative two is one. Negative one is zero. Zero is one. Zero goes with one. One goes with two. And then x is two, y is three. Oops. Yeah, that should have been higher. And then 3 goes with y is 4. Okay. Yeah. So those give me, well, it looks like we've got a v, v shape. And yeah, I think continue the pattern out here to check more. But I believe we've got a v, v shape. You may know, know more about this one right now than we're talking about. But uh, the idea is just. Get a little uh, little graphing in. We'll go from there at a later date. 
All right? Now, let's talk about uh, specifically here a couple of things, and that is uh, the intercepts. <clears throat> uh, we have what are called the x and the y intercepts, and those are very easy because the x intercept just means you're intercepting the x axis, right? You're crossing the x axis, so that's the x intercept. So here, our x intercept, if we write it in the ordered pair form, would be x is 2, y is 0. Over here, the x intercept is negative um, 1, 0. Yeah. And then the y intercept, like I said, that's where it intercepts the y. So what is the y intercept over here? Crosses the y axis, uh, 0, 8. And over here, the y-intercept is 0, 1. Yeah, so the x and y-intercept, very easy definition, just where it crosses the x or the y-axis, uh, respectively. All right? Okay. Yeah, but um, what we want to be able to do is uh, identify these without having the graph. Uh, sometimes you may have the graph and then identify the intercepts, but a lot, of way, a lot of times it goes the other way. We have the equation without the graph. How do we find those intercepts? Well, we note here on the x-intercepts, a common feature of that is going to be, in both cases we've got y is 0, and if you think about it, that's always going to be the case. For the x-intercept, the y is 0.